Hello again. So you join me, Andy, in the, the kitchen or the HG room, and we're going to look at this week's recipe. Hopefully you've enjoyed the last couple that I've done. I know they weren't perfect. There was the odd uh, blooper in there about the board, and I did put a uh, blooper in. Unfortunately, I shouldn't have put nuts in. So I do apologise about that because we are a nut-free school. So apologies about that. I am going to try and uh, keep this one as blooper free as possible. So this week's recipe is the vegetable curry. We are going to make some japatis to go with it and we are going to serve it with some rice. It is going to include the skills that you've been learning over the last few weeks. So peeling, chopping, preparing the vegetables, looking at how we fry, looking at how we move the spices around and then how we serve our food. So I'll go over now to show you the equipment and the ingredients that will be needed for today. The equipment that we'll need for today is out on my table at the moment. Knives, a chopping board that's suitable for vegetables, a spatula, that's going to be our wooden spoon for stirring our ingredients, a garlic press, a peeler, a rolling pin, some scales, a colander, a couple of mixing bowls, that's where we're going to put our prepared vegetables, a saucepan, that's going to be for our rice, and then a larger saucepan or frying pan where we're going to prepare the curry. In terms of ingredients today, you haven't got to stick to exactly what I've got in front of me now. But what I've got, I've got some vegetable oil, some ginger, some garlic, an onion, some potatoes. You might not have seen these ones before. These are sweet potatoes. I've got a butternut squash, some cauliflower, a can of chickpeas, a can of plum tomatoes, some spinach, and then I've got quite a lot of different spices that I'm going to use for my curry. I'll go through those later. But if you haven't got these available, the alternative is just to use a mild or hot curry powder, depending how you like your curry. I've also got some japati flour and some pilau rice. That is how we're going to serve the dish at the end. They're going to be the accompaniments. As Adam said though, you haven't got to stick to what I've got in my curry. If you've got potatoes, peas and perhaps carrots, anything will really be okay to go in your vegetable curry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move to preparing the vegetables and preparing the dough for the japatis. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I weigh out my flour is to zero my scales with my mixing bowl. So I'm going to put my mixing bowl on and just make sure that we've got a zero. Hopefully you can see that there. And what I'm going to weigh out is I'm going to put 300 grams of flour into my mixing bowl. 200 303 now that's close enough for me what we're going to do in a second is we're going to add some cold water to this to make it into a nice dough to my 300 grams of japati flour I'm just going to slowly start to add some cold water and I'm going to mix it by hand I want to make it into a nice sort of not too hard though but just so we can move it and so it raises into nice japatis as you can see my dough is really starting to come together now so I'm going to take it out of my bowl and I'm going to start to knead this with my hands for a couple of minutes. This breaks down the glutens in the flour and gives it some elasticity for when we roll it out later. So we just use the heels of our hands and we just roll the dough forward. This is called kneading. 
If you do want to put a little bit of extra flour on your work surface to stop it sticking, you can do. So we're going to need this now for a couple of minutes until we've brought our nice dough together. I've been kneading my dough now for, as I mentioned, a couple of minutes and it's brought it together nicely. I'm now going to take that dough, put it back into my original bowl and I'm going to put that in the fridge now for around half an hour. While that's curing, I'll be able to get on with the rest of the curry and preparing everything else as I've already mentioned. So this one now is going to go into the fridge. Now the order of the vegetables that we're going to prepare depends on how hard the vegetable is. So potatoes, sweet potato and also butternut squash are a lot harder than cauliflower or especially as spinach. So we're going to start by preparing those. And what we're going to do is after we've prepared them, we're going to put them in a saucepan with some cold water and bring that up to the boil. That will probably take around 10 minutes to make those potatoes and sweet potatoes just soft enough to be able to get our fork into. It could take a little bit longer. We're then going to start preparing the rest of the vegetables and then add those in to the vegetable mix and spice mix later. So I'm now going to get on with preparing the sweet potatoes, potatoes and butternut squash. At this stage it's worth mentioning that you can by all means peel your new potatoes and sweet potatoes but actually all I've done with these is just give them a really good scrub and wash under cold water because there are some really good nutrients within the skins of the new potatoes and sweet potato. With the butternut squash I will be peeling the outside of it but to make things a lot easier you can just chop slice the potato and sweet potato straight away after you've given them a good clean. All I'm going to do with my sweet potato and potato is chop them into chunks of around probably two centimeters or an inch. So what I'm going to do is as we've done before with our vegetables in previous weeks I'm just going to put my knife by bridging through my hand and I'm going to cut my sweet potato in half and then nice and gently I'm just going to put or cut my sweet potato into chunks. I'm going to put that straight in my pan of cold water. I'm going to do the same with my potatoes. Into the cold water, there you go. Going to take that one into half and that can go in as well. A sweet potato, I'm just going to take the very ends off because if you look they do have a little bit of where the root came out of them. You can do one or two at a time and in there you go. Here's my final saucepan full of the sweet potato and potato. I actually used two potatoes and two sweet potatoes. I'm now going to put these on the hob to boil and then I'm going to check them after about 10 minutes to see how soft they've gone. I'm over at the hob now and as I've mentioned before to you this is an induction hob you might have gas or you might have a slightly different electric hob. So all I'm going to do now my pan is on the back my handle is away and I've just covered them with the lid. I'm going to turn my hob on and I'm going to take it to be in up to number eight. And I'm going to set my timer on my oven for 10 minutes, just so if I'm preparing anything else, it gives me that little symbol or signal, sorry, to remind myself to come over and check on my potatoes and sweet potato. The next thing I'm going to start to prepare is the butternut squash. Now the butternut squash 
is without a doubt the hardest one of our vegetables to prepare. You might not have seen one before, they look a bit like a big monkey nut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a section of the butternut squash. It is quite hard to cut through, so you might need some adult help. They do have seeds in them like a marrow, because they are in the same family. But they have a very thick skin on them. So what I'm going to do to that, you could peel it, like we've done before. That would work absolutely fine. But I'm actually going to use my knife just to run down the sides to take that thick skin off. You may well need an adult help to do this because it is quite tricky to do. Butternut squash is a really, really nice addition to the curry. Not only does it add a little bit of colour, but it adds a really different taste into the vegetables. And you just take the top off and we are left with a rindless or skinless piece of butternut squash. And all I'm going to do is exactly the same as we did with our potato and sweet potato. I'm just going to put that or cut that into nice chunks. And in about five minutes, I'm going to add that into our potatoes to soften off. My next step of my preparation is to get the ginger peeled and sliced, the garlic cloves peeled and sliced, and the onion peeled and sliced. So I'm going to start with the ginger. Now, the ginger comes in really strange shapes and sizes. This one actually looks a little bit like a cactus or a lobster. So I'm going to take a small amount of the ginger and I'm going to use my peeler or my knife just to take the skin off the ginger. Again, like it was with the butternut squash, you can use a knife or you can use a peeler. Remember if you're using a peeler to always move it away from your body or your hand because it is a blade. I'm just removing all the skin off that piece of ginger and discarding or putting in the bin all of my pieces. Remember to tidy down as we go. I'm going to set that to one side for a moment and then I'm going to just peel my garlic. So we push down on the, the garlic and I'm going to take two cloves off. Now these are the cloves. They look like parts of a bulb. Which is ironic because actually they are. And all I'm going to do with that is tidying away as I go. Top and tail the clove of garlic. When you do top and tail them, what happens is all of that dry skin comes off, leaving you with a nice clove of garlic with no skin on. So I'm just going to use two of those. And there's my other one. And I'm going to, as I've said earlier, tidy down as I go. Then I'm going to move on to my onion. I take the bottom of the onion off, the top of the onion off, a little bit of the skin there and then using our bridging technique, knife between your fingers and just push down and half the onion. And for now what I'm going to do is just remove the outer skin or if there's anything that doesn't look quite right so we have half of an onion and there's my other half and tidying up as we go to keep a nice clean board so in front of me now I have the peeled ginger I have the peeled garlic and I have the prepared onion so what I'm going to do is the ginger I'm going to slice very, very finely. And then, after I've sliced it finely, I'm just going to run the knife over it again. If you look, I'm keeping the top of the knife on the board and I'm just lifting up the back of the knife. 
and it takes the ginger into smaller pieces. Now it might be that our eyes start to water at about this point because mine are at the moment. So my ginger now is just going to go into one side of the bowl that I have here. Then I'm going to prepare the garlic by using this. Some of us might not have seen one of these before. It's a garlic press and all we do is we put the piece of garlic in there. We press the handle down and our pressed garlic comes out to the bottom. Alternatively, you can of course slice your garlic into small pieces. So that's going to go in the same bowl as my ginger set to one side. Now into that, tidying down as we go, I'm going to add my onion. So I want quite small pieces of onion. So I'm going to go along the lengthways and then holding. I'm just going to chop down. Oh, I don't know whether you can hear that. But that's my 10 minute counter to go and check on my sweet potato and potato. I did say I might be doing something and it might go off, and it has. So there is our onion diced. I'm gonna put that into my bowl, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go and check on the potato. I'm back over at the hob again. I'm got, I've got a fork, and what I'm going to do is remove the lid off my potato and just see where we've got to with softening it up. Now I can tell by using my fork that they're still too hard. So they've had 10 minutes from cold water. It may have been better if I'd have used boiling water to start with. But what I can do now, I'm going to set my finger again for some more time. I'm probably going to look at another 10 minutes. But I can now add in gently my butternut squash to the top. Be careful with that. You may well need an adult's help. So I'm going to set my finger on my oven again for another 10 minutes. I've covered those and then I'm going to go and prepare the rest of my vegetables. Due to the alarm going off for the potatoes and sweet potatoes, I'd left the onion at the dice stage. So I'm going to add this onion now into my bowl along with my ginger and my garlic. When we come to start the curry, this is going to be our first stage. Vegetable oil and fry off the onion, ginger and garlic. And then we're going to add our spices to that. The next vegetable that I'm going to prepare is going to be the cauliflower. But I'm not going to use all of this cauliflower. All I'm going to do is run a knife down the bottom to take off the leaves. And then you're left with the head of the cauliflower. It actually does look a bit like a brain. Tidying down as we go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a few of these florets off my cauliflower. So I've probably used there about a quarter. Set the main part to one side and just remove some of those thick stems. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to add that cauliflower into the potato, sweet potato and butternut squash. The next thing I'm going to prepare is going to be the plum tomatoes and the chickpeas. You'll notice these two both come in a can. Now I bought plum tomatoes. You can buy chopped tomatoes, it's not a problem. If you're going to buy plum tomatoes, a little trick is to while they're still in the can use a knife and just slice through them a few times it just breaks up the tomato you may well need an adult at that stage to help you with the can now the can of chickpeas they come in a sauce sorry or some water we're going to drain that water off and then i'll show you the chickpeas i'm just over at the sink draining off the water for the chickpeas and these are chickpeas you may not have come across them before but that's what they look like I'm just going to remove the, the lid fully from there and discard it 
I could now decant these into a bowl, but I really don't think there's any need because we can tip them straight into our curry when we're cooking it on the hob. The last vegetable that I'm going to include in the curry is going to be spinach. Now, all I've done with this spinach is take it out of the bag, clean it in some cold water and then just put it into a bowl. There's probably one and a half large handfuls there. That gets added to the curry right at the end of cooking. I did mention earlier that I'd come back to talk about the spices that I'm going to add to, to today's curry. If you haven't got all these, please do not worry. Just by using a simple mild curry powder, it will do a similar thing. But what I've got in front of me today, I've got some red chilli powder, some ground cumin and coriander, some turmeric, some asafoetida. Now that's actually used in quite a lot of Indian cooking. It's called heng. Some cumin seeds, some mustard seeds, some caraway seeds, and what's used in an awful lot of Indian cuisine, some garam masala, and that is mixed ground spices. These are what I'm going to add today, but please remember what I've said. If you haven't got these, just add some curry powder. To get the spices ready, I'm just going to use a normal teaspoon and put them onto my plate. The first ones I'm going to start with, I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of caraway seeds, half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. I am going to put the seeds in to start with just to let them crack, explode and let out their flavour. After which, half a teaspoon of turmeric. Now I don't like my curries too hot so I'm only going to put a little bit of chilli powder. The ground cumin and coriander mix some asafoetida and the, a nice, I think with the garam masala, I'm going to go a little bit more. So I'm going to add a whole tablespoon. So that is going to be the spice mix that I'm going to put into our curry today. Remember though, instead of doing that stage, a mild curry powder will do. I'm back over at the hob now and I'm just going to check on our part boiled potato, sweet potato, butternut squash and cauliflower. Now if you can see, I can get the fork quite easily now into those vegetables. So they're ready to drain. So I'm going to turn that one off for now. And then I'm going to use a colander just to run that hot water off the vegetables. Now this is a good time to ask for adult help because this is boiling water, so we do have to be very careful with it. I'm now going to start the process of actually pulling the curry together. So I've got some vegetable oil and a large pan. You can use a large saucepan for this. And I've put that onto the heat and that's on number eight. I'm going to put a good glug of vegetable oil into my pan. I've got my spatula ready. And the first things I'm going to add are going to be our ginger, our garlic and our onion. I'm just waiting a second for that, the um, oil just to heat up a little bit. You will hear it start to sizzle. There we go, that's all straight in. And I'm just going to start moving around the ginger, garlic and the onion. That will take a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn my extractor on, so sorry if the noise changes. I've been moving the onions, garlic and ginger around now for a couple of minutes. I'll move the camera to see if you can see what it looks like. It's just starting to soften now. At this stage, when it's just starting to soften out or brown, I'm going to add my seeds, so that will be the cumin, the mustard, in 
in there you go and they're just going to pop and add their flavour to the mix you can see there is a little bit of steam and it's sizzling away nicely keep moving this because you really don't want it to stick my next stage after my seeds have popped is to add all of my other spices and give that a nice stir if I had smell-o-vision you'd appreciate what that smells like at the moment before it starts to stick now I'm gonna add in my sweet potato potato and cabbage and also now my can of tomato give that a real good stir around it might be that during the cooking I'm going to add a slight amount of water you can add stock to that as vegetable stock just keep an eye on it to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan and I'm going to add at this stage about half a can of the chickpeas again giving it a nice stir mixing it all in together so you've got a really nice mix coming together I'm then going to turn it down to number five and to keep the moisture in I'm going to cover it with the lid on our curry now it's been given a nice mix round I'm going to set my finger for about 25 minutes so all of those nice spices and flavours can start to absorb and cook into the vegetables so I'm going to go back to my I call it finger but my alarm and just set that for 25 minutes while that's cooking I'm actually just going to nip over to the um, washing up bowl get all my washing up down clean down the surfaces and get ready for making my chapatis whilst the curry is just finishing off we're going to move back to our chapatis now I've just taken the dough out of the fridge and I'm just going to make it into a long sausage shape I'm then going to cut a piece off or cut it into chunks ready for rolling out so the way I'm now going to make my chapati is by working it in my hands I'm going to work it into a rough circle shape then with some flour on my worktop I'm just going to start I'm going to work my dough nice and thin I'm not very good at this if I'm honest into a rough circular shape now it hasn't got to be perfect as you can see I know some people can make these amazingly round I am NOT one of those people and what you do with your chapati is I've got here a crepe maker now I realize at home you might not have one of these but all you've got to do is dry fry so what I'm going to do is put my chapati into my hands knock off the excess flour and just lay it on watching your fingers to my pan now you may need to use a slice to get this off or you may need tongs so as you can see there's a little bit of steam coming from my chapati now as it starts to dry fry I'll just move that so you can see it it'll take a couple of minutes to 
fry all the way through on one side, turn it over and fry on the other. The way you can finish these off is by putting them after you've made them onto a gas hob and just turning it over to get that real flame grilled effect at the end. I'm not going to do that today, I'm just going to make a basic japati. Now the japati gives you a little signal about when it's almost ready to turn over. It will start to have some small brown marks on the bottom but also it will start to puff up a little bit on the top. So when that starts to happen, using either your slice or your tongs, just turn your japati over. It is at this stage, when both sides of the japati are cooked, when you can put that now onto your gas hob and just turn it over, it'll puff up lovely. I haven't got that, so I'm gonna take it off the heat and then to finish it off, I'm just going to run some butter over the top or ghee. My next stage is to cook a few more chapatis off for then when the curry comes out we're ready to serve. For me that wasn't far off round and it's probably my best chapati. If you notice it has puffed up in the middle and made an air pocket. A little bit like a pita bread. The curry's now been on for the 25 to 30 minutes and it's come together really nicely. The last and final step is to add in the spinach leaves and give that a nice stir. Put the lid on and just let that sit for a few moments. We're very close now to getting ready to serve our curry. My japatis are ready to go, but I've just been to the polytunnel and I've grabbed some coriander. And all I'm gonna do with that coriander is roughly chop it. So that when it comes to serving the curry, those fresh leaves are just going to go on the top. My last stage now is to actually serve the curry and dish it up. So you'll need an adult's help for this. I've taken my large pot of curry off the stove and I'm just going to put a couple of ladles for the curry into the bowl and then dress with a few leaves of fresh coriander I'm serving this with my japatis that you can share. So I'm just going to rip a piece of japati and put that onto the edge of the bowl. And that is our finished vegetable curry. You can serve that with some basmati or pilau rice and your parents will show you how to do that. So that brings me to the end of today's recipe. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It was our vegetable curry served with japatis. Next week we're going to focus on a pudding. We're going to look at a sponge and I think what we might look at doing is either an upside down sponge or some sort of treacle tart or perhaps sticky toffee pudding. Right then, I hope you all have a nice week. Enjoy your cooking. Happy cooking everyone.